The latest numbers for this year's market just came in and we got some really big news for you. Stay tuned to this week's episode of Prime Properties TV. Promise you, it'll be worth it. Good day Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Properties TV. So glad you could join us here. The stats for March 2019 just came out and it officially means Q1 of 2019 is done in the books and we got some numbers for you to share. But on an off-topic note, as I always like to share with you, 2019 has been a fairly big year for me personally and will continue to be so because I'm getting married later on this year. But the news I want to share with you is that lately in the last few months, we've been working secretly in the background to form a new brokerage. And as of right now, we are officially registered. Woohoo! Our brokerage is officially called Remax Excel First Class. So you may notice some slight tweaks in design and naming, but the first class service and expertise we've been providing to you will not change. On today's topic, the Q1 numbers of 2019 for real estate is done and was fairly boring and stable, which is no, I will say, I something that I prefer. We closed the quarter off with 7,187 transactions with an average price of about $788,000. We literally didn't change more because last year we had one less sale than we had this year and prices were only up about half a percent, barely stable. And if you look at Treb's new fancy charts, which I dig by the way, you can see that Pretty boring. But the things I would like to point out to you is that we got fewer listings in March of 2019 than we did in 2018. We went from 14,700 transactions to just a little bit under 14,000. That's a little over 5% drop in listings, but the transactions remain the same. This means that the market is getting a little bit tighter with prices going up a little bit higher. And here's a chart from Richard Robbins showing the change in the last three months. You can see that the transactions and prices are going up because we're heading into spring market or we're in spring market right now with the months of inventory and the days on market going down, all completely normal. What I will point out to you that I've noticed is that even though we have a lower months of inventory and days on market, they're a little bit skewed right now because of the way the market is and how agents are marketing. A lot of agents right now are posting their listings on MLS and holding back offer dates, even on not their greatest properties. And if they don't get their price for the clients, they're terminating it and then relisting it at a higher price. So that skews the months of inventory and the days on market just a tiny bit. So if I had to make an assumption, I would say we're very, very similar to last year in terms of days on market and months of inventory. Look, I've said this before, every micro market, every pocket, every neighborhood is totally different. You need to understand what's going on or get a good realtor who knows how to navigate these markets. I'll leave my contacts on the screen for anyone who has more personalized questions. Despite what I mentioned, prices are up a tiny bit and listings are less, even though we're getting double listings, is kind of a sign of the market getting tighter from the lack of supply. For those of you guys who are interested, here's a quick lay of the land from what I can tell from my day-to-day -day trading. Markham Town's under $800,000. They're holding back offers and they're really well staged. A lot of them are coming with firm offers with no conditions. Same thing in Vaughn. Mississauga, the semis under 1 million closer to QEW and the lake are moving quite quickly. In Toronto proper, this is four and six, semis under 900,000 that are near subway and renovate are just flying off the shelves. There was a property that had 20 offers the other day. Also, I participated in a power of sale that was listed at 1.3 million and it eventually sold for 1.6 on a bully offer on a bully offer. So stuff is moving, that was in the Midtown area. Um, the other one is condo markets. The one bedroom south of the floor between church and bathers with parking is flying as well. They're holding back offers, sometimes with multiple firm offers on offer date. Two bedrooms, they're not moving as quickly because the price point tends to be a little bit higher. And then on the pre-con side, TC4 and TC5 are basically sold out. Riverview cleaned house as well. So the well-priced product is moving. Look, the market is moving just in very specific segments of the market and only with a good product. People are no longer buying for the sake of buying something. They want a good product in a good area with good value. That's where the demand is. The value has to be there. If it's not, then it's not gonna sell. If it is, you can expect it to have multiple offers. With that being said, let's have a look at the micro markets over here. I'll put it on my screen. Similar to what I was saying earlier, the affordable properties are going up in prices while the detaches, which are not affordable, are slow going down. Again, it all comes down to what people are aboard. And I've been saying this for the last few months. This will continue to happen until something changes to the availability of credit. Something needs to happen to the stress test for the micro market trends to change. The new off first first-time homebuyer equity plan is not really going to affect Toronto market since the entry price point for that program is basically below what an entry product in Toronto is going to be. I think that plan was more geared towards non-Toronto and non-Vancouver markets of Canada because they're seriously slumping. Canada as a whole, and I don't like to use this stat because I think it's really dumb, but it's just interesting. It's the first time ever Canada had a slump in real estate 
and decline in the last decade. So that's something to think about and maybe why the Aussie, which is a federal policy, is affecting all of Canada. So what do I ultimately think is going to happen in April in Toronto? I think the stats will show a price increase from last year and we'll see a slight increase in transactions, but the number of listings, I really think it's going to be less. It's reduced. Unless we see a huge influx of inventory coming onto the market in spring, the pent up demand, I really think it's going to be there for the rest of the year. Nice, stable, consistent growth, which is great for smart money investors. Now, I hope this gives you a quick lay of the land. Until next time, happy real estate.